So we're continuing the moving vlog series at this point, reworking the set. This was kind of a temporary addition for the main set, the big table. This is meant to be for the live streaming set, so it'll be pushed over there, and then we got a tabletop in, and then from Autonomous Desk, the company that makes some of the auto-raising and lowering desks, we got a pair of legs in from them, so thank you to Autonomous for those, and picked up a tabletop to go on that that we're gonna customize. So the plan is go back to the corner style setup where we're gonna have uh, basically the shelf here. We'll load out the shelf with something. I don't know, this Patrick just threw this on here for now to see if everybody would get mad at the uh, excess NVIDIA boxes because clearly that's a big sign and means something. So we're gonna load in the shelf with some kind of stuff. I don't know what yet. Put the table in diagonally. It'll be raising and lowering, which will be awesome for B-roll shots. And this will more or less stay where it is. This kind of stuff here needs to be finished. And then this will go over to the live stream set. So that's part of what we're doing today. The rest of it is going to be acoustic paneling. And then I don't know if it'll be a separate video or what, but we'll have uh, a noise test with the foam paneling there versus not there uh, versus having all the stuff in the room so we can see if it actually does anything. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus store at store.gamersnexus.net. You can pick up one of our mod mats now on back order because they keep selling out, or you can grab one of our other products like the Raglan two-tone hoodie, which we have in stock, or the full Gamers Nexus logo t-shirt that we just restocked in cotton and tri-blend. Learn more at store.gamersnexus.net. Other side's better. So, the side we had on top we'll keep as the top. Okay. Uh, let's bring this out there and just put it on the. Uh, there. Oh, whatever. So, I hate staining things and sanding things, but for this, we did the previous table look, came out looking really good and a lot of that was just sanding it before working on it so that it, uh, it really helps the stain kind of stick and it brings out the wood grain more. So give it a bit of a sand, get some of the imperfections out and let it take the stain and the polyurethane more. There's a bug. Please do not become part of my table. Oh, there's this. Let's put this thing somewhere. So you're never gonna be shooting the floor, right? Well. Is that the shrine to AMD? Is that what the prophets of slash R slash AMD have foretold? <laughs> it's the Gamers Nexus sticker drawer. So we have ASUS stickers, uh, including a passport and a credit card. And then some very distinct what? Gigabyte stickers, passport. including a passport and a credit card. <laughs> wow. Do you nice. Think maybe they had the same company do their stickers? No. Do not disturb. So, Asus really has the edge on these. Uh, Asus they, definitely has the edge. Because in all these packages where they gave us these stickers, they gave us the coasters too. Oh, really? Yeah, we actually used the coasters. Thank you, Asus. <laughs> Our whole office is filled with ASUS coasters. Some we, we could use more if you have them. UVGA poster, uh, UVGA stickers. This is one of EVGA's posters. Come on, EVGA. Who hangs posters up anymore? See. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've just been informed by Patrick that this says 1337. 
EVG, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. The ACX Fire Sword. Come on, man. Thermal pad scandal. What's hot? Just cleaning off. Did a sanding pass on it, two sanding passes on it. To smooth out the grain a bit. It'll let the stain stick a bit better. And also will uh, help the grain texture stand up better. And so now I'm just cleaning off all the sanding dust before doing this, the staining and the polyurethane because there's a bunch of dust on here now from that. So next step will be starting the actual stain and finish process. So we're gonna go with the grain for this and try and minimize brush strokes. First, I'm just kind of trying it out to see what the color looks like and how heavily I need to apply it. Really don't need a lot of this stuff. Can do multiple coats if we need to. Just have to sand it with steel wool after uh, to get some of that polyurethane layer off because it is a combo. I'm not doing staining and then polyurethane. I'm trying to do it all in one go, which I have not done before. I've always stained it first Stained it first and then done the polyurethane coat later. But we're gonna give this a shot just because Keegan and I are flying to Germany tomorrow. That's kind of red. And uh, I really don't want to have to deal this when I get with this when we get back because we're gonna be dealing with probably products. So I want this done before leaving. So we're mostly done with the actual move part now and we're on to finalizing the move, but also office upgrades. We just got a shipment of six Vertigear chairs in. So thank you Vertigear for sending those over. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll build these, maybe do like a race of building them versus each other or something like a speed build, I don't know. But we got six chairs in, uh, the wall, so all the foam paneling is more or less done. I don't have a lav mic on right now, so the audio is because we're using a shotgun mic, not a lav, but uh, yeah, foam paneling is mostly done. We have uh, the set table is outside drying right now, so we're still staining it, polyurethane, all that stuff. So set table's coming along pretty nicely. We're gonna build that up with an autonomous, uh, one of the autonomous like raising lowering legs for B-roll purposes, so that'll be pretty nice. And we also have a $400 light that is stuck to a $200 piece of metal so I need to figure that out. And I think we're also maybe going to install some monitor arms. So a lot going on for today's video as we continue to upgrade the office and start making use of it. Okay, so Vertigear SL5000, that's the chair. And I did want to point this out. So we've built a few chairs lately, office chairs, like straight office chairs just from Amazon that are no name brands and gaming chairs. Uh, one thing that none of them have done is ship with an actual tool that you might want to use later. So I, I will say, Vertigear, thank you for providing an Allen key that actually has like a handle and some torque to it, and you can actually get it in where it needs to go because it's long enough. Uh, so thank you, thank you for actually doing that. I mean. Sure, we have plenty of Allen keys. It's not like we need one, but I think for most customers, probably having a decent tool included is a huge upside. Uh, so I'll give them that for sure. That's that's definitely, definitely helps push the ease of installation angle of the chairs. There's the gas pump and I think all the other parts are mostly pillows, so uh, head pillow, back pillow. Um, I, I personally don't use those. I just use the chairs straight as is these days, but if you like them, I guess they're nice. And then this is the bottom part of the lever and pump and then the chair base. So time, time to build some chairs. Oh yeah. Also, also Vertigear has the, uh, Noctua Chromax rollerblade wheels. Where's the, uh, how do you, how do you open it? Why does it even do that? No, but seriously though, why? 
give you a little sample. I think it's here. Oh, my God. <sighs> But why would you have that and then? Oh, my wrist is not great. I don't understand. Vertigear, I don't understand this box. You have perplexed me. So it can open here. It's meant to open. But also, you can just push it off. It's. Uh, my IQ is too low to understand this. So Vertigear sent six of these over. We didn't ask for much help with the office move. I paid for almost all the furniture. Like, Gian paid for all of it. All the furniture, it's very expensive. But Kristoff at Vertigear previously worked at Be Quiet as PR. Now at Vertigear reached out and asked if we wanted some help with the chairs. And I was happy to take the help at this point. So we've got six of their chairs to build, put them together. We're gonna use them in the testing room and the production room. And uh, overall, I mean, like, sincerely, not just because they sent us stuff. Uh, the quality is significantly better over the last time I worked with the Vertigear product. So if it's been a while for you, then it does look like they've they've improved a bit, but they've changed over personnel and stuff a bit too. So uh, yeah, we're gonna build these. I need to find Patrick. I'm not sure where he went off to, but um, we're gonna put them together once I find him. So I'm replacing the uh, all the door handles and the previous tenant really rounded out these two screws. I went in after and started re-tapping this one. That's why it's basically a circle at this point. But even that one, you can see from the previous time, it's pretty rounded out. This one was worse, it was not salvageable. So I just started drilling through it to take the head off. Then I came across the realization that I could probably just kind of tap it out like that. And it's actually rotating. So I found this trick from just a YouTube channel, uh, I think it was called like Ultimate Handyman or something like that. It's a pretty good trick. I got it to do a full rotation so far. So I'm gonna go for another couple rotations on it and then I'll be able to extract it with just pliers and twist it. Um, so yeah, it was a, uh, originally was going for a drill bit kit like this, except using a smaller one. I've got, got a couple different sizes in there, but you drill with a smaller size one and reverse and then you flip them and drill again and it'll bite it and pull it out. Wasn't having any luck with that so I switched over to just using a basically chisel and hammer <laughs> and that's working extremely well so far. As you can see it just kind of it rotates a bit so I don't have infinite shots at this but I've got enough to back it out another maybe one or two turns and then I can uh, then I can just extract it normally. Right. So, okay. There we go. <laughs> so I ended up just once it was loose enough, I stuck that under there and just popped it out. Uh, I got a longer screw to replace it, so the threads in there are definitely all janky now because I mean this ripped all the wood out. But uh, I'll put a longer screw through on the. We're gonna replace this anyway, so we're gonna replace this whole thing, replace the handle. Um, and put a longer screw in and then we'll be good to go and this is going straight to the trash But that was a really good trick though because these screws were both super rounded out by whoever worked on this door last uh, sadly, I think it was actually a locksmith and Or the person before him maybe um, This one's clearly I mean I can work with that, but the top one was it was gone. So um, So I tried to use the bit to extract it and that certainly rounded it out, but I didn't really have much confidence in it. And the problem is, if you drill through all the, all the head, you kind of limit your options on removing it on extraction. So I ended up just cutting it short on those. I haven't used them before anyway. And I did the tap method where you get a flat head and just lightly hammer it in and it turns. So that worked great. And we're, we're good to go now. We can replace this handle, throw out those screws and never use them again. Man. Okay, so Vertigear, uh, we know that you really care about your product getting here in one piece, but you don't need all of this leather and foam to pack the cup holders. I should move my thumb. To be my own oh yeah, that's definitely... Okay, sweet. Well, Vertigear, job well done. Like, seriously. The first time when Keegan and I built one of the Vertigear chairs, chairs several years ago when they were new, I think it was the SL4000 or 3000 or whatever. When we built it, this these arms 
snapped, first of all, a much longer direction, like way forward, with far greater force, to the point that I didn't want employees building them. <laughs> uh, but this is way better. So Vertigear, seriously, job well done on improving that uh, and managing to make your uh, ease of installation process superior to your competitors in the gaming chair space, because there are a lot of them now. So anything to stand out and be uh, not dangerous is a good improvement. All right, so here's your comparison. This is the original one Keegan and I built. Genuinely, we were afraid of it. We were actually afraid of this arm and the way it released and snapped so hard with such force. Uh, and Noble Chairs, Thermal Take, Corsair, HyperX, everybody who makes a gaming chair, it's pretty much the same suppliers. Some of them are finally starting to differentiate themselves, but it's taken a long time. And because they're the same suppliers, they all have had the same flaws, one of which, again, was the snapping mechanism that uh, on some of the chairs, like Noble chairs, had actually a, a big, like, keep your fingers away from this warning. So that's improved on this model. So that's good. It's no longer dangerous. Uh, so big improvement there. The armrests are the same. These, uh, you know, I'll be honest, of course, we appreciate the chairs, but I, I got to keep it real, Vertigear. I don't really like the armrests. Uh, it's the same problem that, again, every single vendor has. So it's not just Vertigear. It's Vertigear, Noble Chairs, uh, HyperX, Thermal Take, Corsair. Everybody else who makes a gaming chair buys the arms from the same supplier. And they're a hard plastic. So we actually buy these for them, and then they become great. So it's like an 8 or $15 pad you can get on Amazon. So that makes them better. But as far as the rest of the chair, so for the original model, it has this bump in the middle which I did not like, so that's gone here. It's just a flat bottom now. Uh, it's got ventilated holes in the bottom, so a big improvement over the original. And the white on the original did not age well with like belts. So you can see like how the belt marks have worn off on it uh, from black leather belts and stuff like that. So uh, this chair overall though, I haven't really used it yet, but it does, at least from a quality standpoint, appear to be significantly better and the ease of installation is better. So overall on the up for Vertigear with the chairs and hopefully some of the other vendors can follow suit because a lot of the gaming chairs are uh, just, they're just clones. They're like all clones of each other. So uh, looks like we've got some work to do, build another five of them. Certainly a better overall quality and build experience than this original one from several years ago. We kind of gave up on Vertigear after this one, but Vertigear after sending these over, I'm willing to give it another shot. So thanks for sending that over. We'll try it out and, uh, and give you some feedback, let you know what we think of it. Uh, finally, is this stuff. So I brought in one more shelf of tools. And yeah, I mean, the, otherwise this is all back to a better version of what it was at the old location. So back to a corner shot, those scopes back, some people were we're very upset that it wasn't there the first few shots. Like, takes a while, guys. Takes a while to move everything. Um, so yeah, that's our set. I guess we can we can find something else to show too. So uh, test room, test room's gotten a lot of upgrades, and these monitors are not permanent. We just put them all here for now. So uh, this one's probably moving, but. This monitor is, it's on an arm, and this is going to go to one of the two test benches for thermals. So the plan is to have a uh, thermal test bench here for air coolers for either AMD or Intel, and then have the opposite brand on this side. Depending on how they interact with each other, they probably won't run simultaneously, but we'll see. If, if they don't influence each other, we'll run them simultaneously. So this can be hooked up to one, swiveled around pretty easily. Uh, this one, uh, these are both 1080, so they're not really meant for... Uh, for like GPU benchmarks, they're not good enough for that. So these can both just be hooked up to thermal test benches. And then Patrick's got a CPU bench here that's been running. So that's up and working, hooked up to an ASUS 1440p monitor that we've had forever. They're sending a second one. So we can put that over there with an Intel test bench. So we'll have an AMD one and an Intel one, and that'll be our CPU testing. Uh, we have a filing sorter thing that we use for open motherboards. So that's pretty useful. And then uh, the two ASUS monitors up top there. Not 100% sure where those are going yet, but we'll, we'll definitely have a use for them, if only for production systems. So that's this side. This table was raised up, and 
Uh, it's at standing height now. The thing about this table is I'm never going to be actually typing on it, so keyboard height kind of irrelevant. But all we do is like click a few things, start a thermal benchmark, and walk away from it. So standing height's way better for that. And then we have these that our Patreon supporters generously gave to us. So thank you to uh, Zeta organized it, and a lot of you contributed. Thank you very much for contributing to that effort. So our Patreon backers bought us two of these anti-fatigue uh, mats, a couple of other things. So this will probably go here for now. The other one will go on the set or, I don't know, something like that. Um, other than that, cooler bench. I was working on liquid metal stuff here. Power supply testing set up. Patrick Stone's been working on it. Uh, so he's been figuring out some of that methodology. And I think that gets you up to speed on, uh, on the test room. So this is your office moving vlog update. We're getting close to a point where we're going to be doing more office upgrade vlogs than moving. There is still stuff back at the house. So today I brought in like, I don't know, probably 50 pounds of these, just stock coolers from AMD and Intel. At some point we may bring a bunch of them to a, a recycling center that can melt down the copper and aluminum and actually make use of it. But for now we have them and it doesn't hurt anything by being here. So. Uh, yeah, all this stuff, I bought this used, we need to like relabel it and make it ours, but uh, that'll be nice for small parts, cables, stuff like that, small heat sinks. All of this stuff is getting close to final, and I think that updates you on the office for this one. So, uh, thanks for watching, as always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. We have a couple of things up there, like these, that you might be interested in. Uh, these are our, our new mouse pads, so pretty good size on those, GN colors, extremely vibrant, and uh, we have those on the store at store.gamersnexus.net if you want one. Otherwise, subscribe for more, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Why is this?